Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, March 13, 2013. Our guest for today is Alderman Bob Fioretti of the Second Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Thanks. Forum. Thanks, it's great to be here. I really appreciate it. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. Political Forum is a live interactive show brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions and comments. So if you have any questions for the Alderman, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, where is the second ward? Um, depending on how you view the remap, it's anywhere you want it to be. <laughs> so, um, but we were elected, first of all, in uh, the last election. Those boundaries stay in, into effect until uh, 2015. Uh, however, in the course of the census and the data, a new map was developed. Uh, as you can see it on your screen, we're looking at the new map up there, and it goes from the uh, Gold Coast all the way to uh, Lincoln Park, Wicker Park, Ukrainian Village. I'm probably forgetting a little section here or there. It is the most... Um, uh, it, it is a pure form of what they call gerrymandering. Okay, and when does the ward become effective? Uh, 2015, with the next election. That was a uh, opinion issued by the Corporation Council of the City of Chicago. One way you can also view it is that when Sandy Jackson uh, vacated her seat by her resignation, it um, the mayor appointed the new alderman to fill the seat for the old boundaries that were in effect in 2011 when the election occurred. So that's why we know it, it goes until 2015. Okay. Are you working in your old ward or in your new ward? Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> and you may laugh, but uh, um, I have to do all the cleanup in the old ward, but yet for some de facto reason, I have, I have the responsibility to, to deal with zoning um, and s other limited ordinances in the new second ward. And I say it's de facto because, again, nobody's elected me up there and I'm going to try my best to represent them uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay, you and, uh, and when I say, say say we'll see what happens, I'm saying I've heard in this last two weeks people are, oh, we're going to file a lawsuit, we're going to file a lawsuit. Well, if they ever file a lawsuit, so be it. When I see a stamp copy and I hear it's been filed in the state or federal court, then I know a lawsuit's been filed. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I, we're also going door to door in the old second ward and the new second ward and hearing the citizen complaints. So that has really doubled up the amount of responsibility that I do have. You've recently formed a new caucus. Can you please tell us about it? Um, there were several of us that have been working quite uh, strenuously in terms of in policy-driven issues. Um, we formed uh, yesterday uh, with bylaws, with goals, uh, the Progressive Coalition. Uh, it's a progressive reform caucus for the city of Chicago. Uh, and we thought there were there are nine aldermen on it. We thought we ought to stand together uh, and create a more just and equitable city of Chicago. Uh, many of us have been troubled by the direction of the city. Uh, and we've heard it when we had budget hearings last year. And, and the mayor decided not to have any more budget hearings. And uh, some of us, all of them, got together and said, let's go out and listen to what the people have to say. But we heard uh, all across this city, uh, constituents in all wards across the city, uh, they sounded the alarm about the direction of the city. They want us to uh, do whatever we can to right this ship. Um, we heard in these budget hearings they're uh, disturbed by increasing reliance on privatization uh, to create revenue, a failure of transparency by our local, our local leaders from aldermen up to the mayor, uh, and they're angry about closings of public schools and mental health clinics. So we decided to form a progressive reform caucus. And uh, you just talked about uh, closings. Um, are there any school closings in your ward? Uh, there are still eight on the list, um, and eight are too many. Uh, there's some of us are going to Springfield next Tuesday. We will be testifying uh, 
in on the Senate bill to put a more uh, a halt or at least a temporary halt on the closures. I'm concerned with the um, types of uh, the the way CPS has been conducting these uh, hearings. Schools have six minutes to say why they're better or not better. And I can see we're getting waved with a caller, and so we might as well hear from one of our callers or Ca more. So, yes, caller, uh, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Um, I have a question about the Taste of Chicago. It seems about the that, what? Uh, say that again. About the Taste of Chicago. It seems that uh, it's people want to know if it's going to be around in the next year or two because of the deficits. You know, there are cuts made to it last year, and they're hoping that you know the budget then would be nice, and that we wouldn't see that it would go into the red, but it went into the red. So, what do you think is going to happen to it? When you say uh, about the TIF, oh, oh, I think we did. We lose them because uh, I wanted to make sure because uh, you sort of broke up in our what we heard in, in the studio here um, uh, and so your question was a little bit lost in it and so I'm sorry I, I, I want to give you an accurate answer as to an accurate question but uh, I think we lost you as a caller sorry about that we have another question from a caller um, is it fair to the voters to have a ward designed with so many na new neighborhoods? Um, I am completely opposed to the way, and I voted against the remap. Uh, we proposed, some of us, and when I first went in, I proposed a uh, ward map that kept many of the communities together. Uh, one of my colleagues proposed a ward map with only 35 wards, which I was uh, also in favor of because I'm in favor of downsizing the size of the city council since we've lost uh, uh, almost 200,000 people in the last 10 years. Um, uh, I think when we look at Chinatown, several aldermen representing it. The back of the yards, uh, I think three to five aldermen representing it. Taylor Street now has five aldermen representing it. Lincoln Park has three aldermen representing it. To, uh, quite frankly, it's pure nonsense. It wasn't done uh, for purposes to serve the citizens. It was done for uh, protecting political interests and pensions, pure and simple. You mentioned pensions. Do you want to talk about that? Do I want to talk about <laughs> it? <laughs> um, obviously, we in the city are facing, a, in 2015, a, a large uh, increase in terms of property taxes if we cannot settle the pension uh, issues here in the city. I don't, uh, And I don't even want to talk about the state ones because we, as city officials, can take certain steps to make sure that the pensions are fully funded. Uh, and among them, uh, we ought to be looking at what happened in the past and not by uh, some of the arguments that said we were forced not to make, we, the citizens and the city, were forced not to make contributions into the pension programs. We better do it now and not wait to the last minute. 2015 is almost upon us, and the people of this city want leadership. They don't want to hear about hearings. They want to see action on how we resolve the pension crisis here in this city. Okay. I believe we have another caller. Caller, what is your question? Hi, Alderman. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on some recent uh, legislation that um, your coworkers have or your colleagues rather have proposed. Um, I understand that the city is possibly looking at expanding the gun registry here, and I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. It was proposed by Alderman Burke and whether or not you think it's a good idea. And I'm also hearing rumors that we may be able to use red light cameras to um, write traffic tickets for parking violations and I wanted to know uh, your thoughts on that as well. Well actually there those are two pieces of legislation that you're uh, dealing with. The um, gun registry was expanded and it was voted on today and expanded. I did favor it I have to tell you uh, but uh, it's uh, I, I'm looking at the effectiveness and I asked the effectiveness uh, during the hearings on it. I, it's a committee that I do not serve on, but I think it was slightly over 500 people have uh, convicted felons that have been uh, with the UUW um, have only registered, uh, and that's since 2010. 
Now, there were a lot of excuses given that the people were in jail or they were this or they were that. The truth of the matter is uh, uh, we have uh, enough laws on the books, uh, but the gun registry, I think police officers ought to know when they go into certain homes, uh, neighbors ought to know uh, when they are allowing their child to go into certain homes that people uh, are potentially uh, on a gun registry. Offend it's actually a gun offender registry list. Uh, and it's it, people have to stay on it for four years. It's almost part of an extended probation. Uh, at the end of the four years, after they do the reporting requirements, um, they come off of the uh, list. As to the second one, um, you know, these red lights, everything, we've got cameras all over the city, and I, I sometimes wonder about the effectiveness. Uh, and I, I'm going to look at the legislation. As you probably know, I, I voted against the, the red light camera. Uh, I'm going to take a hard look at what this means for our citizens uh, because we are becoming a very oppressive, uh, reactionary city in terms of what we do uh, and how we create revenue from our citizens. We have another caller. Uh, caller, please, what is your question? Yeah, my question is to the alderman about this uh, this problem that's going on with all the shootings. Okay, we have that little girl that I got bless her, you know, but it's just the point that how much time or how much do we have to be uh, watching out for McCarthy? McCarthy's not doing his job. When Jody Weed was in there, he had all the officers on tech. I understand that there's a shortage on police officers and this and that. But instead, you know, I mean, there's a lot of money, you know, the pension and this and that. You got police officers double dipping. Can we stop that? We have police officers that are state representative. We have police officers that are state senator. You know, I mean, you got to, something's got to be done about that. Well, I, I think we're discussing several issues there. Uh, but the overall impact of what I've heard from you is to say we need more police officers on the street. I do agree with that. I've been a, a strong proponent for years that we need more police officers uh, on the street. Uh, we, we are not keeping pace with the retirements. Despite the fact that we downsized the number of police officers that we had, we are still having um, uh, the retirements are outpacing those, the new recruits. And, you know, the problem is, and I scratch my head, that every time we have somebody right down the street, uh, the academy, we're, we're over here at the, uh, on Green at the studios, and the, um, the academy's two blocks away on Jackson, uh, that they say, oh, we're going to put them in the toughest neighborhoods. Well, you know, you need some seasoning to understand what happens. You need help. You need almost a mentor to help you fill out police reports, to show up at the court appearances, to, to know what probable cause is. Probable, probable cause is, yes, you can say there's a, several hundred cases on it, but it's, it, you know, to really define what it is is, is something different, and it needs uh, a lot of learning and responsibility and good mentoring so we have a good police in our communities and we need to diversify good police in our communities. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, Alderman, I'm calling back about the taste. Uh, ah. It's a, a summertime tradition oh. for, for lots of families, you know, and last year, as you know, it, you know, lost 1.3 million uh, and that's even after the mayor, you know, shortened the event, had people pay more for concerts and food. So my question is, do you think that the event has a future? Do I think it has a future? Uh, well, that was part of the uh, reason today that I put in a resolution uh, urging hearings, and we are going to have hearings on it, um, on the Taste of Chicago. Uh, I, 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 in the resolution, I have a copy of it in front of me here. Um, we had 3.6 million visited the Taste in 2006, and that was probably one of the largest amount of folks in, the, uh, in its history, uh, and that was a 10-day event. Uh, in 2004, we had 3.5 million, and they had 12.3 uh, 12 million in revenue. However, since that time, the taste has continually lost money. Uh, it's now shortened down the festival to five days. Uh, we changed changed the dates later on in July. Uh, you know, maybe this is just becoming something nostalgic, but in this day and age, when we're under tight budget constraints. Uh, losing 1.3 million dollars 
with the addition of top names that we put in last year is something that I as an elected official better be looking at. Uh, maybe the department can uh, convince myself and other aldermen that this is still a good thing but because it enlightened brings people down to the to the downtown area to the lakefront but and maybe they spend money elsewhere but i think uh the facts and figures so far show that it's a losing proposition we've got a lot to discuss on this um uh and, and we should be looking at the books uh, two years ago i said to michelle boone who's the commissioner of uh, um, cultural affairs i said at that time i think uh the taste of Chicago is on its last legs, and we better be sure as we go forward uh, that we're not just taking, uh, breathing some kind of uh, air into it, uh, and we need to do something to boost it up. I've yet to see that happen, uh, despite the fact that they've started charging on some of the venues, uh, they've started charging for some of the ideas. Uh, it's still losing money, and we together, uh, we meaning the, the elected officials and the citizens should decide whether or not this taste of Chicago is worth it in the long run. Okay, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yeah, hi. I'd like to know, um, in your ward prior to your terms, uh, the, the South Loop was very overdeveloped, and I'd like to know, and many of these units are still uh, sitting empty, so I'm wondering if there's anything uh, you're working uh, with the developers to either get those units filled or to restrict further units from going into that area? Well, that's a good question, but um, we've been, part of the way that we've been looking at bringing um, uh, and filling those units is by bringing jobs down to the uh, South Loop and West Loop, Bronzeville, and the West Side. As you know, we're, we're in the midst of a, a severe foreclosure crisis. Um, we have, when you say empty units, a lot of them have turned to rental by the, by the developer or developers. Um, and so they are somewhat, and uh, I'm going to say this without having the, the numbers in front of me, but uh, the, they're not empty. Uh, they are generating something. Uh, but the problem is the overdevelopment uh, obviously led to a serious problem. I looked at the uh, foreclosure numbers uh, just for the second ward alone, and they are significant because a lot of speculators, uh, people bought in the second ward uh, when the new developments were going on. They didn't, they, they didn't just buy one, they bought five and 10 and 20 units. Uh, and now the time for their note has um, come and they can't re, re, um, re up it uh, with the banks. And so we're faced with serious foreclosure problems. Um, in, in the second ward alone, there were almost 600 foreclosure filings last year, uh, compared to some of the other wards where stable communities, uh, such as the 18th ward uh, on the south side, had 755 foreclosures. Those are those are solid middle class families, and we're faced with a serious problem that I believe both uh, the city council and the state needs to address. Uh, and we've proposed certain ideas, and uh, I'm going to keep fighting for it. And I, I should say we do have we in the have in the second ward a um, legal night, and it's every other Tuesday. It's uh, twice a month. We have about five lawyers, and a lot of the work has been to help people uh, refinance their homes, fight the foreclosure issues for them, and help them out of this uh, foreclosure mess that has been caused by the people on Wall Street. Um, how did this legal clinic come about? Well, uh, I have a, a very diverse ward at service uh, from uh, the second ward as constituted from uh, the, the area of, um, and that's the new second ward uh, up there on the map, but from the lakefront all the way beyond Sacramento. And as you can see, it goes down into uh, the Bronzeville area. Uh, it, it, it had a lot of folks that just could not afford lawyers. It has folks that can't afford lawyers. Uh, and so what we did was um, I, uh, we created this, uh, people came in that needed help legally and I 
gathered up on some of my friends in the legal community, asked them to help uh, become lawyers. Uh, they are lawyers now, but to, to service a legal clinic, and that's what they've been doing. Uh, it's been a great opportunity. Uh, I just received a card in the mail on Monday from a woman uh, whose family we had helped, uh, and not a foreclosure issue, but on another issue. And uh, uh, it, it's grateful to see that kind of um, service that we can provide for people. Okay. We have a, another caller. Uh, caller, what is your question? Hello. Hello. Yes, I want to thank you, Ms. Fillier, for coming out and working with the schools to help Bennett and uh, Ron from stop taking over the school. And it seems like you're the only alderman that is coming out to support the school. The rest of these aldermen will come to the meeting, but they do not come out. And I think these aldermen are making deals behind their own community back. And it seems you're the only one who is standing up for the little people. And in my opinion, I think you should run for mayor when it's come time for the election. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the school closures are a difficult issue. Uh, it's difficult in a lot of ways. I, I said about five years ago, I told CPS that some schools need to be closed uh, or consolidated. Uh, but what they did, CPS did five years ago, they closed a couple of schools where students had already been in a, a closure, not once, not twice, but three and going on their fourth time. Uh, we offered uh, counseling uh, through an entity uh, to some of the students and CPS said, no, we can handle it, which they didn't do. Uh, these four, these um, closures of schools are so important because CPS, not only is it educating our kids, but they're the biggest land planner in the city of Chicago. And uh, as you know, uh, a house that is foreclosed upon depresses the economic value of other houses in and around uh, the neighborhood. A school that's closed uh, has uh, a, a very negative effect on the community. But what CPS is doing now, and I really am objecting to, is that they're pitting one neighbor against another, one parent against another, a principal against a, another principal, saying, my school is better than your school. Uh, and not only that, I've only got six minutes to make my case to the board on why my school or your school is better than my school. And what happens, and what I see as the biggest problem, is that when one of these two schools get closed in the neighborhood, what are the parents going to think? What are the, uh, on, the, on the closed school? What's the principal going to think? The, the teacher's going to think. What did we do wrong? They may have done nothing wrong, but it was the arbitrary and capricious nature of the closures that resulted in the closing of one school or another. And then not only do we have a depreciation of value of, of phys, uh, physical assets, we have a depreciation of, of assets of our people in this city. We have another caller. Uh, caller, please uh, tell us your question. Hi. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to welcome Mr. Ferretti into into our new thir in the thirty second ward that he took over. Good, it's good oh. to be there. You got to. Uh, I'm working with uh, Scott Waggis back well, on a lot of we're, items. We're not too happy with him. We're happy right. we have you. And Thank we'll you. Leave though. it at that, but okay. He's he, he's been informing me on a, a, some of the issues. Well, so. he hasn't done what you've done in yours, and you know we need a new change. So okay. Thank God, it's a refreshing change. Um, quick, Finkel and Sons. Mm. that moved out. Don't you think it would be great to have, like, DePaul for their arena there once they clean that up? Uh, you know what? That's an idea I hadn't thought about. Uh, as a matter of fact, before City Council today, I was looking at uh, uh, the Finkel site. Uh, I've got s some scheduled meetings um, that later, I think, next week on the site to start dealing with it, but we need a lot of community input. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of chemicals, as you know. Yes, and um, I know my girlfriend's uh, husband worked there. He passed away at 52 because of all the chemicals that are in there. You mm -hmm. know, the lime dust, the asbestos and stuff that's in there. And, uh, you know, I just tell people, be careful when you go th through there. You know, it's, it's a dangerous thing that those guys are doing in that mill. And they don't get um, compensated, you know, saying you're doing a good job. 
Right, and it's a, it's a difficult site to deal with. It's 30-some acres, and we've got to make sure that we do it in the right way to, uh, to make sure uh, we have full community input into it, and we develop the site into a, a treasure for our city. Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Are there any final comments or words you'd like to tell the audience? You know, I, I'm a cheerleader for the city of Chicago, and thank you for letting me be here tonight. Um, I think it's a great city, but we've got issues, and we don't have the small issues. We have large issues, how to educate our kids, how to make sure we have uh, expand our tax base, how we get jobs for our citizens here in this city, for our citizens, and how we deal with a balanced budget, you know, and affordable housing throughout this city, and that everybody participates in all the good of what this city can offer. Our museums, our sports events, our cultural events, those are what make us proud, and yet we've, we, if we all band together, we do it the right way, we're going to have a great city, a great future, and uh, our kids who this is what it's all for uh, are going to be those that are, are going to be the best generation we've ever seen. Thank you, Alderman, for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you. Thank you, viewers, for your calls and your questions. Our telephone technician for today has been Steve. Political Forum is a community service brought to you by CAN TV. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.